Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, this morning, the location of the flow front uh, remains little changed from what it was yesterday. It's moved a couple tenths of a mile closer towards the Daniel K. Inouye Highway. Uh, it's about 3.3 miles uh, south of the highway at this point, and it has slowed considerably as we uh, were forecasting as it reached the uh, flat ground at the base of Mauna Loa. So it's in the saddle. It was moving at about 0.03 miles per hour, which is somewhere around 30 to 40 yards per hour at this point. We expect uh, from here on in for the, the movement of this flow to become somewhat sporadic as it goes across the flat ground. It will inflate, incoming lava will be stored in it, and then it will probably come out in lobes at different times. So it, sometimes it might appear to be moving faster and sometimes appear to be not moving at all. Um, because it's on flat ground as well, the flatter the ground, the less direction that lava has in terms of flowing. And it's really apparent at this point that lava is no longer behaving like water would across here. So our normal little water drainage maps really don't apply to moving this thick substance across the flat ground. The lava will extrude lobes, and those lobes could actually block future lobes. And we're right on the divide between lava going to the east and the west sides of the island. So um, we don't really know which way the lava flow will ultimately go if this does end up being the lava flow, the main lava flow for the eruption. So there's a lot of uncertainty here. The, the thing we can say is at this kind of rate, it would take at least a, a week for it to reach the highway, but we don't really expect that to be a, any kind of accurate measure of the time, just to give you a kind of a, a time reference on how far 3.3 miles is under current conditions. These, like I said before, we expect these current these conditions to change and remain variable throughout uh, this time as the flow spreads across the flat area. There is also another lobe of the flow that is coming down um, to the east of the main lobe. So this lobe is coming down from vent four, from fissure four, and the main lobe is being fed by fissure three. The activities at both of those fissures seem about equal to what they were yesterday. The uh, fissure three being the dominant fissure producing most of the lava. Uh, fissure four is producing less, but it's enough to sustain a flow. That flow has come down and crossed the upper part of the Mauna Loa Observatory um, road last night. So that that was already crossed twice by the fissure three flow. So this flow is kind of headed down. It's moving a little bit faster because it's on steeper slopes, but it will also slow when it comes down to the ground. It's hard to say if this flow will be sustained throughout the eruption or if uh, eventually the supply to that fissure dwindles. It's also possible that the supply may shift and in the future that more lava may come out of fissure four. These are things that we just don't know at this point, um, but are subject to, to change during the eruption. And finally, uh, the winds have shifted, so they're more out of the north. Previously, they've been out of the south. We've had reports of Pele's hair as far away as 15 miles away to the during the northern winds. And uh, so now as the plume moves to the south, uh, we expect some of the SO2 and potentially uh, Pele's hair could potentially impact some of the communities at the south end of the island. And that's pretty much where we are for our update right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, since you have Talmadge right next to you, we're just going to go straight to him. Take it away, Talmadge. Thanks, Wendy. Good morning, everybody. Uh, from the county side, we've got uh, several big things to announce. Um, first of all, today is siren outdoor siren testing day, so uh, making sure that people are aware and nobody's getting uh, surprised and thinking that it's something related to the volcano. Sorry, if it were, you, uh, we definitely down. message it's that. It's your own but, damn you know, fault I'm for just, being resourceful. I hope that's not referring to me. Anyway, <laughs> 1145 will be the, the siren testing. The next big thing, and, and there'll be an official announcement coming out uh, from the, the mayor's PIO, is the county working with um, our partners, state highways, 
DOT, state highways, Buffalo training area, um, internally uh, parks and recreation. We've come up with a traffic mitigation plan to help relieve uh, the big influx of uh, traffic and visitors to the, the saddle area to view the lava. Um, this will incorporate using some of the internal roads, used to be the old saddle road that, that traversed through PTA from approximately across the street from Kahele Park all the way back towards Hulu Hulu. Hulu. So people will travel one way on that route to view the, the lava flows. Um, and that'll open up later today, um, hopefully relieving the, the traffic congestion and, and relieving some of the safety issues and concerns that we have. Um, so so those, are the big, those are big items. We continue to work despite the, the fact that the lava has, has slowed. Uh, we continue to work with the different industries and partners in case it gets uh, taken out, you know, what, how are they going to work their transport around the island? Uh, specifically working with the observatories up on Mauna Kea, the, um, the shipping industry as far as utilizing Kwai Hai and, and Hilo Harbors, trying to, trying to, you know, shift their load so there's less vehicle tractor trailer traffic, um, possibly bound for the Hamakua coast. Um, so, all this plan continues uh, despite the slowdown. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'd just like to add one other thing too that's a little bit unrelated to what Talmadge was saying, but yesterday there were reports in the community of loud booming sounds, and these were uh, determined to be sonic booms related to fighter jet overflies west of the island.